Hey, it's Jesse here, and we're getting ready to put these Amo Mark IIs on that 79 Bonneville. So first off, here we got, like I said, Amo Mark IIs. Uh, this was an upgrade to the Amo Mark I carburetor. Um, it has it has a lot of possible uh, better spots that in, the, in these carburetors that were better than the Mark I. Um, I can't really say that it was a better carburetor. But there was improvements from the Amo Mark One, so uh, we'll go over all these little little areas here, and then uh, coming up here. So stay tuned to this, and once we get this done, we'll work on putting it on the bike. All right, first off, we'll talk about the bowl differences between the Mark One and the and the Amo Mark Twos. Um, all right, first off, they're square on the Mark Two. Compared to this Mark One, her original ammo here, carburetor. Um, capacity is a little bit larger, I believe, by volume. Um, we got a choke jet here. This is the idle jet over here. And this is where your needle goes in the seats. Now, it appears to me, I didn't mic it or nothing, but it appears to me that this area here is larger than the ammo Mark One, which will actually flow better flow more gas. Um, another difference is this notch here that's been cut out. So when this needle opens up, gas would pour in easier, which is not not, rel not here on the Mark 1s. Um, we still have a drain here compared to here. And this is your feed, just like this one is set up. Um, the needle, the needle was changed to this style. Um, I have a different one here, just hold on a second. But the needle here was changed to this style and it actually, um, actually was three-sided. So it actually would, uh, let's see if I can get the focus here. Dang, okay, there we go. It was three-sided, so it actually, um, gas would seep, would seep by a lot faster and better. And then our Floats. Our floats a little bit better design too. Um, uh, here's a here's what a Mark One needle looks like in size difference here. So that shows that that hole is a bigger bigger diameter, and it would help the flow of gas. Um, so then we got the the Mark One or Mark Two or Mark Two. Uh, this was in Mark Twos also. Yep. Same. So this was actually seen in both Mark Twos and Mark Ones. This was uh, the original the original style uh, float, which um, as alcohol was introduced in gasoline in the 80s and 90s, um, they kind of like started eating this stuff away, and it would cause problems for these carburetors. So a lot of people would think that their carburetor was going bad, but actually it was. A flaw in a component in the carburetor so we have a different uh different float we're going to be putting in here i believe oh. so it should be this one here stay up float it's considered a stay up float um better material it doesn't react to get, uh, alcohol like the original floats did um i think that kind of covers the float the float bowl area so we'll put that together real quick here which all we're gonna do is just put the needle on here. And then uh, and then what we'll do is we'll put it in there, of course. Pretty simple task. There we go. Alright, we'll move on to a different spot now in this carburetor. Alright, so we'll talk about the jets here. Um, this is a needle jet where the actual uh, needle comes down here and closes it off. Here's the needle right here. Of course, it would come down in there, stop it, and as your uh, slide opens up, it would open up the flow of, of aspirating gas. Here's your main jet. And uh, it's a pretty nice one here. It has the, the sizes all stamped into it in the side here. Let's see if we can see that. 
yeah, right there. And then this needle jet here is out of a Mark I. It's, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit shorter. It's hard to see there, but it's a little bit shorter. Um, I'm not sure if it would. Mark II has a ring around it. Oh yeah, so to really easily be able to tell differences, there's a little groove ring right here. Let me see if this focus works here. Yeah, there it is. See that little groove there? That has to be in Mark II. And it has to be in Mark II. This one does not have that groove. That's in a Mark I. Yeah, like you said, a Mark I. All right, well, I think that covers the jets there. All right, we're gonna pretty much finish it up here. This is the slide mechanism here. So we got the slide, and this is what pulls the fuel in, fuel and air mixture in when it opens, when you pull the throttle. So obviously the needle just slides down in here. Other way. Did I mess that up? Yeah, that's why. Oh yeah, yep. So yeah, and then inside here, your spring sits inside there. And this goes down there like that. Now there is a little indicator on here what type of uh, angle this one is. Or the cutaway. Or the cutaway. Um, let's take that back out. So let's zoom in here. If I can get some light. All right, there's a number here. The bottom corner here says three. And that depictates this, this uh, angle right here. Now you can get all different types. And then it pretty much just, the difference was the theory that the elevation and your area would depictate which one you would use. Um, in Iowa here, where we live, we have all of ours at three and they seem to work pretty good. Now, if you go to a different elevation like the Black Hills or something, it might want to use a different one because I've had my 77 Bonneville out there before and it just burns better out there. The elevation and the oxygen is just different. It's, it's nice. Um, yeah. So, uh, anyway. So we put this, we put the needle in through here, and then of course the spring goes in through here. Um, let's let's do it. Let's just assemble it. The needle goes in. We lock it with this piece. Yeah. Then I mess it up. Then there's a there's a pin down there. It catches on. Right there. Oh yeah, that groove right over there. And then of course we put the spring in here. Then that keeps the needle from pulling up. Yeah, and then we just slide that into the top here, and of course. Then there's a groove here that's yeah. got a line, line up with the, the stud on the inside. Can you see the stud? Off to the side, right, yeah, right there. Yep, brass piece. Yep, that brass piece there we've seen. You gotta make sure the needle goes in there. Yeah, it lines up in that hole there. Yep. And after that, you just push it in. And then we hook up our. Oh, we got to hook up the the cable into there. Yeah. yeah so we got to pull us all apart when we get on the bike. Anyways, so we'll show that again. But uh, yeah, but we're gonna just set it like this for now. Yeah. So we're gonna button this up here, and then we'll move on to start disassembling the bike so we can change these out. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the amos that are on it right now, because uh, it works good. Um, these carburetors work really well. Um, like I said, this is like the the main carburetor for all British bikes throughout the 70s and late 60s and 70s. Um, and then in 79, they changed it to Mark II. So this is a very familiar looking carburetor. Um, these aren't just aren't correct on here, and but we just want to look, make it look like it's supposed to be a, what it's supposed to look like in 79. So we're gonna put the Mark IIs on. That's pretty much the only reason, so. Well, stay tuned. Yeah, we're hooking up the spigots to this, this carburetor now. We put new, new rubber. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have 
this one. Put that on to leave it loose. Yeah. Just let it be. Like that. And then that. Yeah, let's talk about that. And that was kind of like that, holds that it stabilizes together. the carburetors and keeps them straight. Plus, when you had this style of chokes, that kept them from doing this kind of deal. Mm. Even though the manifolds hold here, this held the back sides from going like this every time you went to pull the choke. See how it does that? Oh, well, yeah, it kind of does it anyway. But Yeah, well, once we put this on the manifold, it wouldn't. Oh, if sure. you had this. Sure. Otherwise, you go like this, and one carburetor could turn because it's on rubber. <laughs> So this held it, and you bolted it solid there. Then that made both of these work. Yeah. So we're gonna for one. We're not gonna put this. Style. We're not using this set. Yeah, we're not using that set or that style of choke. We're gonna put um, choke by wire and stuff here with a, a lever. We're gonna use these, which takes this here, these style ends, and they just simply screw into this spot here on both curves. So. All right, so we're putting this on now. Yeah, well, it's no easy task. Yeah, it's on already. Okay. Those rubber boots are tight. They get to pop on there. You gotta be careful with this brass tube that you don't bend it. Oh yeah. I don't I think your carburetor's I... messed up and junk. There it goes. Alright. I don't okay. think I... Yeah, I didn't touch no. that, I don't think. No, no. <laughs> you, I'm just saying. Maybe I did. I don't think I did though. Okay, now we gotta put this I'll look back and see, I guess. I don't know. Oh, you did. Yeah, because we don't want I'm them to bend it, otherwise they don't function properly. Yeah, it won't suck the won't suck the gas up into the Oh, we gotta take it off. <laughs> well, I gotta do this part first. That's right, yeah. I gotta be able to pull them aside. I gotta be able to get this on here. Oh, yeah. Get that seal down around it. Gotta make sure we look at that. Yeah, it carries a seal there. Otherwise, otherwise, yeah, we'd have like a a leak. Massive air leak. I am, well, it still function, but it, who knows what would happen? Noises, whatever. <laughs> yeah. For number threes also. Yes, uh, number threes. Oh yeah, there's a three. A little bit different than the other the way it's well, just written. I mean, it's all. Of course, we're going to reuse these cables, right? Yep. Well, I, th yeah. I think we can reuse them. I don't remember changing them. That's it's why just that we're adding the choke one. That's why I put Norton. We're just adding the choke one into, into here. We're going to add those later. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is going to stay off. All right, so I took the cover back off it. Um, yeah, with this, these carburetors being inset like that in line, uh, it makes it kind of difficult to get this stuff out. So now I got to rotate this carburetor on that side. On this side, because the other side I can get to. Right, and it's because, and it's because of this uh, oil, line there. oil line here. Yep. Yep. All right. Now, first off, we put the, the 
that in, then you got to put this in put the, the second hole. Yeah. Put the caps on first. And then we gotta, whoops, yeah, hold on here. All right, well, I had to I had to stop there for a second and dig this piece out. So, cap goes on first. And then, then the spring. Yeah, the spring. Press it, hold it, literally hold it, tap down, offset hole, then you gotta put needle out. This has gotta slide in the needle hole and off there. Get that out of the way. Now we slide the needle down in. That locks it all in there. And I, li I like to line up that E-ring. See, that E-ring will hit that cable. If you put it over there, it puts a bind on it. So you line that up like that. Yep, sure. And then you drop this down. Make sure it falls in that groove. In, in that groove. And put that down. Okay, now we got to find that. Find the long groove. Yep, line it up. Line it up. Gently, don't push too hard. Right. Because the needle's got to line up too. Yeah, because we got to get the needle go. going. Yeah, you can't see it, but yeah, there's a lines into that hole. Let me just screw the cap down. Line, I can, I'm not at the right angle here, but is it lined up? It looks like it is. Yeah, you're going. Yep. You got it. Now, you pointed out that this was on the wrong side, so let's just fix that. <laughs> Yeah, he's going the other side of that. Okay. Simple fix. No, it's all right. Okay. Right? No, I think it goes there. You want behind to go here. inside? I think it goes behind there, but you don't have to. I mean, I don't think it says anywhere where it needs to be, but <laughs> I think it would be better if it was. Yeah, probably like that. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, now finally we can put this on. I've only tried this a few times now. <laughs> Well, we were eager to get her done. Yeah. Yeah, this must be some more so you can get it past them. Or take this one out. No, that's okay. Trust me, it'll go. Fighting to get it on the right side of that washer. Well. All right, fine. <laughs> the washer is messing with me. Yeah. God, it's so close, you know? It's tilting. Just back it out. Well, then just take it off. <laughs> it's going to be like that. Yep. It's not a big deal. Okay, get on that latch. That notch, I mean. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, started now. Dang thing. All right, it's all the way in, ready for be tightened down. Well, we might still be messed up because I probably won't be able to tighten the choke in here. Damn it! Okay, back this off again. Take it off one more time. Might have. We might have to move that other carburetor to get to that. Uh, we didn't incite that. We I need to put that choke on there and tighten that it down. It might be hard to get over to. There. Can I see it? Yeah. I'm gonna grab the cable here. Okay, now we got to have to bring this up. Feed it through. That's probably far enough. 
so I'm gonna put the my monitor probably right around here somewhere. Right in there somewhere. Wherever okay. the cables dictate. Now hopefully we can get this in here without having to tear it all back apart. <laughs> And all this is is a plunger. It doesn't really hook to anything. No, it just lays in. It just creates the. It's already hooked. Yeah. Um, what size was that? I started this one, but I don't think it's gonna be in your way. You might have to. Wrench that one down from over here. Yeah, it is metric. But yeah. maybe both sides. Depending on where the flats line up. I thought we can tighten it up over here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, flip the wrench. I don't know. I might have to share it. Let me try it over here now. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think we're going to have to loosen it back up again. Stay tuned here. There we go. We're back. All we did was loosen this back up, turn it a little bit. We were able to get a little bit more out of it. That's something we don't do all the time, so... That's how it goes sometimes. So, anyway, yeah, that was the, the noise there was the throttles moving up and down. Of course, now we gotta adjust them once we get this all put back together here because we need to have synchronization between the two carburetors so they open and close at the same exact time. And that's why we left the bowl off. And yeah, that's why the bowl's off, like you said. So Since with these parallels and it's so close back here, you can't watch the slides. We'll go over that. We'll go over that here in a minute here. So and we're getting pretty close to that. So we're hooking up the truck choke lever here. This is like an original style, older one. Older bike one. Like uh mid-70s and older. Both uh Triumph and Norton use this style. I bet BSA did too, I think, right? Yep. So yeah, almost every British bike did. This is theirs. <laughs> they were made by Amel. Yeah. They had an Amel carburetor. They had these. It's just in '79, I think, right? They eliminated that. They went to that lever. Yeah, they went to that lever. So yeah. Well, some of these got mounted way down here on the carburetors too, like your '77 when it was new. It, it was down there. You oh, it wasn't under that. I guess not really. I still got the bracket. We took chokes out of it. Just like I did with this one. It just really didn't need it. So I just didn't use it. And uh, this is a, a better way. I, I feel like this style, doing it this way, is a little bit better than just flipping a switch, either on or off. You know, We're able to actually adjust how much choke you want with this lever. And yeah, then, you can yeah. a little. I mean, because yeah. yep. the amount of pull, you can dictate that. Yeah. Oh, this would be off. It works opposite of the other ones, like in your Mark 1s. With a Mark 1, you, you pull it this way. You, you pull it this way to take it off. Oh, in the 72 Norton? Yeah. And 74 Norton? This would be... This would be on chokes on this would be off okay and then of course it's adjustable right but uh yeah we'll get to that i think it's pretty much where you want it isn't it well i'm trying to get the
might have to loosen it a lot. Let's see, make sure everything's in. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want them to be constantly on, so we got to make sure that they're, there's an, a good position for it to be off. And then a spot where it starts to engage. There's a little bit of free play there. Like I said, otherwise it'll be on all the time. <laughs> Slightly. We don't want that. No. Alright, so we routed that cable we changed the route of it because it seemed like it would function better over here because in hindsight we didn't notice we didn't see that uh, this uh, valve here for the, the brake um, got in the way and then if we routed it through the through that line there it got in the way too so it was just better and easier just to route it along here this way up and then loop right up through there pretty smooth and simple Choke. See if I can oh, see choke. it better. There we go. We can see it better. There. Routes right behind through here. So, yeah. All right. So now we're going to start the synchronizing process here. Make sure you back off the throttle stops all the way. So, yeah, we're backing the throttle stops off all the way. Now, synchronizing a, a twin like this, uh, a twin carburetor system like this on a British bike is a pretty important thing and very uh, kind of, uh, I won't want to say delicate, but it's it's important because of the fact that if these are in tune and in sync, it'll function a lot better than if it's off just a little bit. I mean, otherwise you have one lazy cylinder. Yeah, we end up, yeah, like he said, one lazy cylinder. Um, uh, I think on my uh, 77 when I bought it, it was not quite synced right, but uh, I, I overlooked it because I was only about 17 at the time. <laughs> and then uh, me and my father here, we uh, had to do some work to the engine a little bit, and then uh, we realized that it wasn't synced right, and then that thing is uh, is right on, right on now when it runs. So anyway back on track here so now there's many different ways to sink a rut item <clears throat> some people put drill bits in there and then when they turn it they watch them drop at the same time or stuff like that i personally like to have the float bowls off and the main jets off and you watch you watch the two needles it's just a visual and you can see it so close i'll put a white paper back here so you can see it even better now what you want to watch is, when you're looking straight across there, to see which one moves first. You'll see which one. I'm just going to jiggle it a little bit. Can you tell one or the other? Yeah, kind of. It's hard to tell. I'm, I'm like moving I too much. I lock one down, and then I only adjust the other. Okay, so, see if I can do so that's what we're doing. We're watching the bottoms of these. These needles. We're gonna yeah. watch them move at the same time. Now I would say that they look like they're really damn close. Yeah, they are real damn close. It's really hard to tell. I'm shaking a little bit here too. <laughs> Let's see if I can hold this still instead of here. I think it's this outer one over here on my side that's, if any of them are moving, it's that one here first. There it is. Yeah, they're right on. Now we lucked out here. Um, when we were dialing in my uh, 
72 Norton, it was really, really obvious that they weren't, weren't synced. Well, if we would have started your video when I first got to it, it was really obvious too. But anyway, that's pretty much what it is. Um, we can't use a, this isn't a vacuum carburetor, so we can't use any well, sort of. Well, you can. You can put a vacuum sticks there. Oh, you can? I didn't realize you could do that, I yeah, guess. you can, but I, this is close. Yeah. I mean, we only have two carburetors we got to work with here. Okay, now after I tighten it, I'm going to check it because it can take up some pull when you tighten it. Oh, when you tighten the tops up here? Yeah. Good enough. Yeah, I think that's great. Yeah, we took the main jets out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch that needle. Okay. And I'm gonna, well, yeah, you just watch the needle. I'm gonna feel the slide. Yeah, it's just touching it. I feel it just touching. After it just touches, then I roll it in one and a half round. One half, one, one and a half. And that'll put it just a little bit too low of an aisle. And you can finish it out later. Yeah, when it's running. Yeah, after it's running. But they'll be in perfect sync to start with. Yeah. Supposed to be one and a half turns. These are the air screws. I'll be right back. This is too big for that. This is the air screw. Okay, one half, one, one and a half. That's where we're going to start with it. It may or may not need to go in. And out. Yeah, then what we put the main jets back in and yep. put the bowls on. One half, one, one and a half. Fortunately, you don't have to sink these very often, so typically, unless you have to change a, uh, a cable or something. There's a hole over there that that pipe's got to go in. And I can't see it over here. It's got to go down in that hole. Oh. And the, um... There. It's in the, um, one jet the I, idle jet. Yep. And then there's a blanking plug down. Here, there, there it is. You'll know when it's right. You got to make sure it's right before you tighten these up. Yeah, otherwise you break stuff. Bend stuff, break stuff, whatever. After you get one snugged up, it's you don't have to hold on as hard no more. After years of turning these screws, you get pretty good at this with your fingers. <laughs> Somewhere, there it is. If 
I don't want to tell you either. Because I gotta turn the other two in yet. Right. Right. I need to do that over here. Alright. We're on the other side. One's harder. And it gets really hard when you gotta put the last two on the inside in when you on the when we put the other bowl on. Because they're blind. Yeah. yeah you can't right see what's now, going on. I can like see that. this side, but a little bit. And we'll see. Okay, now I'm tiny. Well, it's not that you can't see those inside ones because they're on the corners, but it's a lot harder because it's tight in there. Yeah. And it's like right, not right in front of your face. Yeah. So it's kind of like hard. This, to... It's not as easy as this. Because it's right here in front. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I, I know what you meant. Because when you can't see it, you're just going by feel. It's like... Yeah, you gotta wiggle around, find you gotta it. You gotta put them in my braille it. or something, you know? Yeah. Okay, now I got a feel back here for it. Yep. I feel the holes right there. There it goes. Got it started. Yep. Of course, I can see it. room for my fingers to turn it to get it started so I was trying to get the screwdriver in there it goes of course it's a slotted screw so it's not like which is nice but it's also the Phillips would so be nicer yeah the mark ones use Phillips I don't know why they went to straight Started. You might have to turn the turn it or something to make it shorter or longer or push it. I was like, there, no, I got it. You got to push it. Pull. Yeah, it keeps getting stuck. Yeah, I know all about it. got a tight hole in there on purpose so that they don't leak. Sure. The trouble is when it's back down far enough the threads catch on it. Yeah, and it has like a, a filter inside of it and stuff. Yep, and everything catches. If it isn't very, that hole isn't in that banjo is not very or the body isn't very thick.
There we go. So we got the side cover on, a few line on there, and then we can do the other outer side cover on here, and do the same to the other side here. Pretty good at this over the time. Hold it in here. There it is. That's all we do. Hold on with spring. There it is. Cool. Oh, now we're ready for the tank. Ready for the tank. Alright, so here we go. We got it all uh all buttoned up and ready to go now. So we got the these breather hoses on there. This is all routed and hooked up and everything, as you can see. This is what it really looks like with the Mark IIs on there. So now we're ready to put the tank on. sure that them nuts don't hit when we turn. So I think it was further back. We'll have to back the bike up a little. Pull it tight. Okay. Otherwise they get tangled and lost on it. Yeah, yeah using, the, using the Phillips screwdriver kind of like works as a nice little device to slide it down in there. Okay. We're going to back it off a little bit. Yeah, so here we are. We're just making sure we have the right clearance here on that. Otherwise, it chips up your tank. Yeah. Now, this side's a little narrower than this side, so we might be in damage on the other side. Ooh. Yeah. We're going to slide that tank back a little bit more. That's probably an easily overlooked thing, huh? Yeah, that's why you see so many. There it is. Nice clearance there. That's why you see so many of these tanks all chipped up in the front. All right, now we just tighten this down here in the center. And this is a chip free tank. Yeah, we'll keep it that way. There's a spacer in there, so all you do is you snug it up tight. Well, I mean, within reason. Right. And then it's solid as you. Now yeah, we just put the glass lines back on now. Make sure they're on there nice and tight. Well, they're not tight yet, but they're on there. Yep. And just run them up on. Just like we took them off, we want to hold the petcock still. Again, and then tighten just the piece here that's loose. We don't want that peck out moving because yeah. it'll leak up here. under to where it kind of stabilizes the there we go and then last we put that brace in the front on
Get your side started? Yeah, so what? Alright. You don't have to kill all these bolts. You just have to. Yeah, I end up over tightening them. You just smash the paint all up and yep. cause problems anyway. It just keeps the tank from doing this. Vibrating and shaking around. Well, there we go. Now, when it's nice outside, we'll test ride it and Fire it up. But until get it then, running. Yeah. Until then we're not gonna. But until then, it's gonna sit here, ready to go, and all that stuff. So Good I hope more. you hope you enjoyed all this and. And uh, stay tuned for other exciting adventures <laughs> and stuff we do. So until next time.